And so we're going to look at the Mediterranean Sea and the origin and formation of the Mediterranean Sea in ancient times here. Um, Mediterranean Sea is huge and has quite a depth, 1,500 meters, which is about 4,900, close to 5,000 feet. And uh, it's a major point of depth, this 5,267 meters, over 17,000 feet. And that's a few miles there. You can see the opening between here uh, from space. And uh, there's not very much tidal swell that goes into it. It's not rapid like it is out on the other part. In fact, the farther east you go into it, the amount of river runoff and things in there, precipitation, um, usually... Um, doesn't add up to enough to make up for its loss and so there's a higher salinity on this eastern side here especially around these islands than there is out closer to uh, the strait or the uh, pillars of Hercules where the water mixes with each other during the high and low tides uh, there's actually a connection that was lost at one time between the Mediterranean and then it inundated itself again uh, for a long time mankind prophesized that it's possible that uh, this disrupted mankind but they find now geologically it goes back to about almost six million years BC and so in that fact it uh, wouldn't have been even our predecessor the oldest predecessor we have is 1.2 million and so it would have been its pre predecessor before that but they experienced it now you have Gondwana land in the major part of what's called Pangaea and this is back 200 million years ago and there is no real Tethy Sea at this time. It would have been what is up into here somehow. And this little formation is what makes the Middle Islands in it in some way as it rips apart twists and what happens in that area. You can see as it starts to rip apart here and create what is known as the Tethy Sea that's right in here. All the land masses start dividing out. Here's the primordial ocean that they talked about running through Africa for, uh, for a long time. And uh, then it dried up to be just around here in the mounds. This mound decreased and is no longer here anymore. Um, and of course, everything's changed and it's all swollen around the planet. Um, not to digress too much, but I've often thought that this extra weight on one side of the island, or on uh, one side of the world, created such a centrifugal force of gravity that perhaps that allowed most of the creatures and the oxygen level expanded back in those days to become such giant creatures. Indeed, whenever they found these giant creatures in old times, they would uh, think that there were giants in the land in those days and so on. Finding them down near the Atlas Mountains in primordial time led people to believe of in Atlant and uh, Atlas himself that held up the sky. Uh, you can imagine if you find some leg bone of a brontosaurus or a large creature that's you know going to be five times taller than a man's leg from his knee down and you find it, you'll think that, you know, gosh, there must have been giants in the land in those days. Not to twist that with the idea of finding somebody who has megalomania or something and is actually six foot eight in a time when everybody else was about five foot tall and you would call those giants too, like the Goliath episodes and things like that. Now, once these plates started cramming back together here as everything twisted apart and you're looking at the Iberian Peninsula here and then over here we have northern Morocco type of area of uh, North Africa and uh, the desert is starting to form in places but not getting a hold of it and there's enough rain to keep it down pretty much and it even rains in those deserts a little bit it looks like and formed a lot of the sandstone that's there for a while and then crisped out but for a while here in a moment whenever this pinches off you're gonna see that the water is really down into this basin that's a lot deeper running down through here and then it dries up further and further now these highlands here are nowhere the depth that we were talking about before that's down in the clefts that are right down in here and over here on the far right and down in that cleft there is where you can get the, you know over a mile depths but these go into the hundreds of feet in fact a lot of these areas are uh, within two or three hundred foot become exposed and that's kind of important in what we're talking about here too so this all formed the Alps about at the same time that it uh, formed everything in North Africa struck in Gibraltar and it's 5.96 million years ago or 6 million years ago for all intensive purposes and it cut off the Atlantic here and left a little cleft that goes in that you can see this little dash right here and uh, later you'll see how that changes. Now this is because the water running through there making like an ancient riverbed running back and forth and of course, it was shallow for a long time, tides and stuff, 
But here we go after a, a few hundred thousand years of pushing and plating and it actually gets isolated completely from the Atlantic. And uh, by the way, the, the place that's the Pillar of Hercules is now is right down in here that it comes back out. So it breaks back in at a different point and these mountains and the, the actual landmass here pushes up and so it doesn't have an ease through there it finds a cleft or like much like a, a pathway through a, or a passage through mountains and ma your mountain passes but this will be back up here and this is how it dried up now at first it would have been all in the brown area and the blue and then it started receding and they can tell that at one time it was like this for a long period of time and started to dry up more and more these rivers got pushed they stopped they started running this way up here as opposed and out the waterway there when at one time from here to here it used to run in like you see right here and so things changed quite a bit over time and it slowly began to dry out in geological times and it became 50 times more salinity than it normally is uh, in natural seawater and so most of your sea life's going to die off and it would have reached a threshold you know and and, it, and gotten way above normal salinity and become basically like a brine lake and during that time looking down into it it would have looked kind of like the Grand Canyon throughout the whole Mediterranean area with a giant hill sticking up there would have been giant salt deposits and the flat areas would be most like Bonneville salt flats or something uh, it's uh, not like Salt Lake City is done but a whole lot more in fact, it completely dried up and erased all the forms off the bottom of it due to just the erosion of the brine, and they would have become little pools like this. Now, at the depth of the basin here, the wind's blowing around and everything over the area, uh, and it would have been much like a Death Valley type of situation. And uh, once it gets that low and uh, that far below the actual um, sea level, you have the effect like Death Valley where it gets just cooking and it has a an adiabatic type process where the temperature down in the basin would have gotten quite bad and uh, almost a hellish actually uh, intolerable for any creature it would have come down to four kilometers and the prediction is there that it would come down to about uh, 40 degrees celsius uh, at 72 degrees hotter fahrenheit than we have currently today the theoretical maximum temperature down the depth would have been about 80 degrees Celsius or 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Plus the air pressure would have been more than twice, it says nearly, but more than twice the air pressure down in the bottom of the cliffs. And they call it the Mycenaean salinity crisis off of the Mycenaean people. And uh, it became all dried up, crackled, and gone again. And you would have been living in something, uh, well, you couldn't live down into it. It would take actual, you know... Uh, living on Mars half a million years later the conditions began to switch and shift a little bit large amount of rain and stuff and these pools started up again but this crisis was nowhere near over and you would have seen something in the brine lakes like this and these crystals forms and massive salts and all this desiccated stuff down in the bottom of the basin here about 0.63 million years later um, would break through and again, watch whenever it breaks through at Gibraltar, it doesn't break through where it was at one time coming through there. This landmass has changed in its size, even though in the picture it was the same before and after, kind of its size. Of course, shorelines and things would have changed during all this. And I'd like to mention at this point, though, when we're looking at this, the ocean now, just from the last ice age, is going to you know, be a lot higher than it was. And there were thermal maximums before, like what we're at now, of course. And so it could have been up to that height, but whenever we were in the last ice age, all this blue area that you see outside of this, every single bit of it would have actually been exposed and been land, and most of your people would have lived in these places. And uh, if we could only somehow uh, find some way to do some archaeology there that would mean anything, being submerged underwater and the acidity effect of being under the trapped under the silt and the nitrogen formations and stuff, that uh, it really doesn't allow somebody to be done there has to be a special process where it calcifies something into a fossil rather rapidly or it's going to be gone so after that process it broke through and it was coming in at such a rapid rate that geologists actually figure out that it could have happened inside of a few months filling it all the way back up to sea level outside in the Atlantic it may have taken 
as much as about two years to reach that point. And that's saying that it started out uh, with, a, with a trickle and came in and it eroded itself down. Now, if it was a decent break when it happened, it would have done it rapidly. And that's the difference between the two. And uh, they've run so many charts onto it. So it ate through and ate this line. And in doing so, everything, you know, earthquakes too twisted and pulled this apart a little bit more in ancient times. There's even a few recorded ones where like Alexandria got submerged in places like that. But that's way far in the future. So when it first started coming in too, you can tell that there are places that, you know, called, you know the Sicily Sill area and stuff that would not have been like the blue area on the right that we looked at before versus the left. One would have filled up way before the other. And then during the incision of the flood, it would have cut and made an increasing depth and increasing depth, increasing depth, and then this would have been, and then wham, this would have really filled up and gotten up to this point here. Now, this is the point it's at, but then again, it would have been right about here and not really too deep at all at the end of the last ice age. So, once that started happening here, um, it actually raised the salinity of the ocean in the world and looking at salinity levels here, we're looking at micro salinity levels. If you look down here at the bottom, it's just hairs of difference. If you had a big glass of water, it would be just, just pinches of difference into it. It's not enough to really, you know, I taste the difference, you know, um, and stuff like that. Where does it get worse in it? Well, in the Red Sea, it gets real bad. Of course, in the Dead Sea, it's impossible. And then in the Mediterranean, it gets a whole lot worse also. And, uh, there's your thickness of the oceans of the world thinner of course up near the ice caps because you have a lot of ice flow out and of course a lot of rainfall rivers and things like that reaching in uh, if you have too many places around in an area that don't have much you're generally going to get a whole lot of evaporation and things like that um, so it's the chain it even changed the salinity of the world whenever it became inundated not by much, but by a measurable amount, a few points. The normal salinity of natural seawater is about 1.024, and it said that it got up from 1.023-ish to 2, up to 2.4. And, of course, that uh, all the way through 2.5, 2.6, but then was thinning back down due to the last ice age. In fact, if we have another ice age, so much ice is going to suck out of the ocean and such that it will go back up to a thicker salinity. Projections say that it almost made 1.028. This is a tessellata eel here, and it comes from around Africa and all the way through actually the Asian Isles and the, in Bali and places like that. It's a, one of the forms of moray eels, and it bite the shit out of you. But uh, anyhow, somewhere way in the future, this could always happen again with the way that they're going and inundating uh, Africa, as it spoke a second ago or showed in the, in the writing there, uh, um, is still being inundated by it and pushed. And so if that raises up, or if there's something big that happens, of course, it wouldn't be happening during our lifetimes. It would be far too much to close up. It's, uh, what, 16 kilometers across it or something. So it's not going to be uh, something that's going to happen where, you know, you're going to have a way of noticing it in your lifetime. And it would take a large amount of events for it to do it. And it's the uh, earthquakes and all these things to help add up to it. Now let's look at another uh, video of this in a way that it indicates in more of a CGI type form. So let's zip over here mentally and start looking at this and we'll look at a CGI representation uh, that it's been made and compiled by a few scientists here. And this is uh, when it would have started breaking in, you see. And uh, did you know at that one time the Mediterranean Sea was nearly dried up? Well, yeah, it was. We were talking about it before and it was really like even much worse than Death Valley and really a problem there. And once it dried up, this is the way it would have receded back. So it gives you a little better idea there. It's about six million years ago, as I was saying, you know, and so it didn't take too much to make it happen. It was just that pinching of that plate. In fact, the slight gap in that plate is all it took to ever change the situation out here. And uh, so 
I mean, the formation of the boot and so on like that is because of the depth of the water going right there. Within a few thousand years, really, they say, um, it started drying up and got to the area of the brown we were looking at before, and then it got down to the smaller, losing 75% of its volume. But eventually, that straight breached and it came back in, and once it breached here, so here's your computer simulation, a little look at it. We're here where eventually it broke through. Of course, they show it here with already the pillars, but of course, that would have been there. It would have broke through and then eroded through rapidly, and here's how it would have started filling up. Again, the first area, and not even the area over at the right until it breaches it also. And so here we are looking at from the eastern slope and how it would have filled up. Kind of terrible graphics here. It almost looks like somebody did this and, you know, a little kids program here with the blocks. But you get the idea of it. Over a quarter million square kilometers of land got submerged at once in this side. And this is uh, the Balearic Basin, you know, your other side over here, on the other side of like Sardinia and Corsica. It's going to break through here in a minute and then it flows in and make the rest of it. I haven't mentioned it yet in all my little rantings, but Mediterranean actually means Middle Earth. So it makes you think of Gerald Tolkien, and it's kind of his little idea of it. And uh, some things go along with it out of some ancient stories, but I won't get into that this time. Huh? So it's like filling an Olympic-sized swimming pool with a garden hose. And... Uh, no, it'd be a little more than that, but it wouldn't be near like a fire truck. And then once it broke through on that second size you saw there, and, uh, so this guy wants to tell you there's another story to be told. Now his belief here is the Black Sea, and I've got one coming on that too, but evidence indicates the Black Sea too suffered a breach flood also itself, and uh, the, there are people primordial around there. Uh, you know, my video on Kamyana Mohila shows you people that knew of the Sumerians and had the very first writing that's all made of just thick and uh, scratches and it itself um, had its own little exposed land area that blocked it off from this even happening. Now this was an extreme lowered Black Sea at that time but it was getting enough water flow into it. It was fresh water totally at one time and didn't have any inundation to it from the others and it's believed that all this little area around this was all primordial people like the Kamyana Mohila people that date back to 22,000 BC so they had been here through the last ice age and out of it and then left uh, and or didn't make it through it whenever this type of event happened here so the Bosphorus opened up and did something very similar like that cutting it first through a little path and then it started filling up the neolithic people there um would be on the shores below and boom they'd be gone in fact there's a few places i don't know if you see the lines all in that that if you look at it on google maps it looks like there's some squared off structure -y looking stuff that all kind of you can't tell what it is anymore and there might have been some ancient cities up under there and stuff but it rapidly filled up the bottom basin of that area and uh they too think it happened, you know, in a day and a night in Atlantis and so on. Not necessarily, but it would have trapped people into there and where they didn't know how to get out. You can imagine the size of that, that they wouldn't know where was full, where was not. It would have trapped a lot of people. And so people say that this may have formed some of the basis for the biblical flood and Noah's Ark's narratives. But I think myself it goes back to the uh, asteroid impact at 10,500 BC that everybody kept and passed down all the way until the point that in Sumeria there was another flood uh, well a series of them actually but then one incredibly bad one that I've done a video on here recently and in that process everyone left Sumer it became a, a morass and a waste and they lost basically everything from then on it was Akkadians and Elamites acting as Sumerians and then went out from there and pretty much went away so anyhow there's your other uh, depiction of it and kind of neat that that happened but primordially there you can see I wanted to show all of it because it did and it kind of gives you an idea of what happens to make it all and how it formed in its origin peace